Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster. Today we are going to be covering advice for young designers in the world of fashion. I will say this up front. I am not a fashion designer. I am extremely passionate about fashion. I know a lot about fashion. I study fashion every single day, but I do not have a degree in fashion and I certainly do not know how to make clothes. However, I have talked to a few thousand of you on Instagram and other social media platforms. I am exposed to tons of young designers who are just getting their start. And I've also spoken to a lot of people who have been in the industry for decades. And especially through the part of that where I'm talking to a number of you who are just getting your start, there's a couple of patterns that I've noticed that if we address those, I feel like we can make your uh, life as a fashion designer a little bit easier for you. Like I've said, I've talked to a ton of you, like a ton of you that are just getting started out. I've, I've seen a lot of your work. I've seen the experiments that you're doing, the projects that you're working on and you're awesome. You're great. A lot of you are working with very few resources, not a lot of money. I mean, the standard thing that gets talked about in the industry is that to start a fashion brand, you need a minimum of $100,000. And many of you are just going for it anyway, which is fantastic. That's perfect. I admire the ingenuity. I admire your passion. And it, I mean, most of all, I admire a lot of your work. I've, I've seen so much of it and it's so, so good. I want to make things easier for you. So, Please don't take any of this as like, this is criticism. If like Bliss has looked at my work, he actually thought it was garbage. I don't think that that's true. I truly am trying to make it so that you can win as quickly as possible. With that said, we're gonna divide this up into a few major pieces of advice, some good like nuggets, and then we're gonna fill that in with some other little tidbits that'll hopefully be helpful as well. The first major piece of advice is going to be the one that is the most difficult to swallow. Are you ready? Here we go. You need to get the basics down. A lot of young designers that I've seen are immediately jumping in and trying to design these really crazy garments, these asymmetrical things, something that is inspired by Rick Owens or something that's inspired by the Lumps and Bumps Comme de Garçon collection. And that's great. That stuff is the reason that a lot of us got into fashion in the first place. We see something like this on a runway and we're like, that's incredible. I wanna make my whole life about that. And it's really, really tempting to see something like that and then to start sewing for the first time and to immediately start making some wild fantasy of yours come true. Here's the reality of this. If you want to make fashion a hobby that you do occasionally in your free time, that's great. Make wild and crazy stuff, goof around. There's no pressure and there's no time limit on anything. Just do whatever you want. If this is something that you want to become your career, you need to learn to get the basics down. If you don't know how to draft a pattern, you need to learn how to draft a pattern. If you've never cut things from a pattern before, you need to start cutting things from patterns. If you're not able to take measurements off of somebody and then make them a plain pair of chinos and a plain jacket that both fit them perfectly, you do not need to be focused on crazy asymmetrical runway looking fits. Drafting patterns especially is something that requires math and engineering. It's very, very difficult to do, but that is not something that's out of your reach. There's a lot of fashion designers that taught themselves how to do it with very little outside help. And now is the absolute easiest time to do that in the history of humankind because you have YouTube videos and you have people on the internet that you can reach out to and ask for advice. But if you're not able to go to your dad and take his measurements and then cut out a pattern from pattern paper, cut out your own pattern, and then using that pattern, cut out fabric pieces, and then sew together yourself with a sewing machine, a final piece that is just a pair of pants and a jacket that fit him perfectly. If that's not possible yet, the experiments need to wait. You can't get to stuff like this, and this, and this, and this, and this. None of that is possible if you cannot just make plain, well-fitting, excellently tailored, perfectly pattern cut clothes. Alexander McQueen was a damn savant at this. He could cut out pattern pieces, sometimes without using measuring instruments, which is insane. And he could often cut a dress without the use of patterns, but he was only able to do that because he got so damn good at manipulating fabric and cutting things out. And he got such a feel for the distance that was necessary to get the tension right. that He was able to start doing that freehand. If you just started out freehand and you've continued going freehand, you should not stay there. And I will tell you, even, even apart from a like, this is how you should do it kind of thing, every fashion house in the world that you may wanna work for has 60 million people knocking on their door that wanna work there who are, as I used to be, a stylist 
or they have lots of ideas or they want to be a creative director, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if you show up at their door and say, I have a backlog of thousands and thousands of original patterns that I designed, here's 200 of them that are good. Please look at my portfolio. That is when doors start to open for you. I know this is difficult to hear, but you need to get the basics down. Similarly, kind of in that same note, point number two, do not allow yourself to get into a headspace where accidents are a good thing. There's a lot of designers in the world that talk about how a happy accident was how they stumbled upon a certain design. You need to keep it in your head that perfection is the ultimate goal. When you have something in mind, you need to execute it as clearly and fluidly as possible. And if there's a certain piece of tension on a pair of pants, or if there is a certain pleat on a skirt that doesn't look right, do not think of that stuff as acceptable. If something didn't go right, you need to take that as an opportunity to learn more about the technical side of it and understand why it wouldn't go the way that you wanted it to go. Once you fully master the technical side of all of this, that's when you can start opening your mind up and saying like, is it possible that these negative things, these things that I can't quite get right, is it possible that there is something beautiful in that that I haven't been able to see before in the original plan? But until then, and especially while you're just experimenting at home, you need to be ruthless about perfection. Rick is not able to send stuff like this down the runway by saying, oh, well, you know, it actually like kind of stuck out like that and I ended up really liking it, so we just kind of went with it. You can bet your ass that they knew exactly what they were going for when they made this look. There was nothing about the finished product that was different than the way that they had it sketched out and the way that it was on paper. Pattern. Be ruthless with yourself about details. Hold yourself to an extremely high standard. Next item, kind of a mini item here. If you already find yourself in a place where you are technically pretty advanced, you've really mastered those basics and you are ready to move on to kind of more intermediate or advanced stuff, the pattern magic books are excellent. I have them and I don't even sew. They're just beautiful books to look at in the first place. They're really not that expensive. Buy these books and execute some of the ideas in here. The author points to some of the most famous like pattern tricks in the history of contemporary fashion, some stuff that like Comme de Garçon has done, and she shows you how to do that on a pattern by pattern level. I cannot recommend that series of books enough. They're fantastic, I love them. A lot of you might have some building anxiety inside of you as I'm saying some of these things thinking, but how do I actually get this stuff really, really down? I'm so hungry to make really advanced things. I don't know how to actually get these, de I don't know how to make this. Here's the answer. Point number next, you need to get back to work. The only way that you are going to be able to create excellent, beautiful work that you are truly proud of, stuff that is physically in the room with you where you can point to it and say, look at this, I made this, I'm so proud of this. The only way that can happen is by producing a shit ton of work. What are you doing after work? I'm making clothes. What are you doing this weekend? I'm making clothes. What do you do after your girlfriend breaks up with you? I'm making clothes. What are you doing over Thanksgiving? I'm hiding my sewing machine in the back of my parents' SUV so that I can make clothes while I'm there. You need to take the Apple approach to design. Your first idea is never your best idea. You finish a pair of pants, make another pair of pants. Make a slightly different pair of pants. See if you can work with the tension differently in the inseam. Make another pair of pants. Try a different shape of pocket. Make another pair of pants. See if you can figure out how to actually make the stack look really good when it's on a pair of boots. Make another pair of pants. Make another pair of pants. Make 60 pairs of pants. The guy that started Rag and Bone very famously is kind of difficult to work with because he does not accept the first version of anything that they create. The first pair of jeans that he ever made, he made 60, literally six zero samples before he was happy enough to say, this can go into production, I think we're ready to do it. If you've never read it before, there's a very short book that is one of the best books that I've ever read. It's called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Get the audiobook if you can. The whole thing is, it's incredibly short. It's like three and a half hours for the entire book. He will kick your ass and it will be the best ass kicking that you have ever had. His argument is basically that the source of most unhappiness for most people is because they are not fulfilling their true calling. If you were meant to be a fashion designer, really, okay, I understand that a lot of people like just like clicked this video and that you're kind of watching in the background here. But if there's one point where you actually like watch the actual video itself, let it be this point right now. If you know in your body that you were meant to be a fashion designer, do not take that away from the rest of us. We need your work very badly. The world needs what you have to offer it. Do not sell us short and don't sell yourself short by occasionally working on it and letting two weeks pass since the last time that you got on your sewing machine. Make more work. Pour your whole being into making clothes. 
commit yourself to doing the art that you were meant to do. I was at a literary conference listening to this novelist talk and uh, someone raised their hand and asked him the question, how many books did you write before you got your first one published? And he said 14. He wrote and edited and completed 14 novels before one was good enough to get published. If you finished your first dress today that you've ever made, that is awesome, good work. Don't stop. As soon as you put the last detail on that dress, immediately start making a pattern for the next dress. Let there be no time of celebration, no kind of pause, because that is where you're going to get bogged down. You won't be able to sell your first dress. You are not gonna be able to sell your 15th pair of pants. I'm sorry, you're not gonna be able to sell your 50th jacket. Buy a bunch of muslin. Don't waste good fabric on experiments and learning. As often as you can, take the stuff apart, reuse the material, try not to be wasted but you need to be experimenting and churning out things as much as possible and after your 500th creation you'll be able to look back over the course of everything that you made and you'll be able to see a pattern in the 45th thing that you made and the 81st thing that you made and the 215th thing and say I actually see something here that I'm not sure I've seen anywhere else I wonder if I can make more things like these three garments and that's where Every artist's unique vision comes from. Don't be precious about your work. They're not your babies. As soon as you finish one, start the next one. We have one more point to get to that to me probably is the most common hang up for a lot of young designers that I talk to, but before we move all the way into that, if this is something that's useful to you, if this is something that you derive value from, this channel, this video, support it on Patreon. YouTube is my one source of income. This is what I do for a living. And if this is something where you feel that you have pulled some value out of it, the Patreon starts at $3 a month. If you've never used it before, I would be honored to be the first person that you've ever supported on Patreon. Link is down in the description. Let's move on. Don't allow yourself to get hung up and waste time on details that do not matter. And most of those details, this is gonna be so weird coming from me, most of those details revolve around branding. I love branding. I think it's a modern art form. I think there are brands that do that so exceptionally well and that's kind of the thing that gives a lot of fashion brands the the oomph that makes them worldwide established sensations. It is important that you do this in the correct order. If you're in the place on your career path where you're saying, damn, I really do need to focus more on pattern cutting or I really should learn how to just make a normal jacket. That is not the time for you to be obsessing over what your brand name is. That is not the time for you to be really fixated on what the logo is. The logo and the name of the brand can literally be the last thing that you do. Your Instagram presence, that will come when it's time. The nuances of the tag that you're gonna put in the stuff, that doesn't need to come before you figure out how to cut your own patterns. Please do not soak up time doing things that feel like work but are not work. The people who are capable of producing absolutely incredible stuff are usually very smart people. And to be frank, very smart people often get bogged down with too many good ideas. You need to be able to say, that is a cool idea for a logo. I might sketch that out and take 30 seconds on it. I'm not going to focus on that right now. That idea was good. Good job, me. I need to work on clothes. And to be totally frank, y'all, like I know designers who have good businesses. They have very solid businesses. They are not worried about how they're paying bills for the next year. They're doing great. And their logo is bad. The tag on the inside of the clothes, it doesn't look that great. But you know what? The clothes are dynamite. And because they're well-made, they have a really big, very committed client base. And that's because every time they had an incredible idea for a good Instagram post, they said, I can't do that right now. I'm sewing. Focus on what is important. I hope this was helpful, my friends. All I want for you is to be able to bypass things that I know tons of artists and I myself as someone who does content creation, these roadblocks are very, very easy things to get caught up on. You need to get the basics down. You need to be a perfectionist about your own work. You need to get back to work. Don't focus on things that aren't important. Go get the audiobook for Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art. It's really incredible. I'm gonna say that I do not recommend the book. I recommend the audiobook specifically. It's read by Stephen and it really, you need to hear the guy himself yelling at you, kind of. It's great. Be encouraged, my friends. I love you a lot. Talk to you later.